ale vplyv managementu vodných zdrojov. Commodification of water does not create water. All it does is steal water from the communities who had that water earlier, but do not have the purchasing power to play the game in the marketplace of water. Till agencies like Coca-Cola came with capacity to mine 2 million liters of water per day, there was no really big reason to have a written law on how broad groundwater should be managed. The protests were a surprise in the beginning, but you know, we've learned some valuable lessons from that. And one of them is that we should probably have engaged the community much sooner in that discussion. Vice President of Coca-Cola of the U.S. said to me, well, they, they won't talk about a compromise. And I said, you're there taking their water. Their valleys and their farms are running out of water. Their kids are, don't have any water to drink. The compromise is you leave. There's no compromise here. What are you doing here? When we set up an operation anywhere in the world, we do an extensive environmental due diligence to understand what are the issues and will we be able to operate that facility long term in that community. It makes no sense for us as a business to put $20 million into establishing a plant in a local community, hiring the staff and bringing them in uh, to then just in a few short years extract and deplete the resource that's critical to our business. Within two years, the case was up in the courts. The courts ruled in favor of the community and said that water was not a commodity, it was a commons, and the High Court of Kerala ruled that Coca-Cola could not extract water. Over the next couple of years, there were independent studies done as a result of this criticism. Had a committee set up of which it was a member itself, fabricated the data, pretended it was not mining, that there was no pollution. And what came out of that was a decision by the High Court that Coca-Cola really wasn't the main cause of the water shortages in the Plachamata area. It was actually three successive years of short monsoon seasons. It has uh, triggered huge response. A few months ago, the state of Kerala banned Coca-Cola, and this ban by the state of Kerala was challenged by the United States government, and the ambassador of the United States acting on behalf of Coca-Cola started to threaten the government of India and say, make Kerala fall in line. So what you see happening through Coke is not just the triggering of water wars by stealing local water, but triggering of democracy wars by undermining the freedoms of regions, communities, and states to make their water decisions. The United States of America would like to act as the Coca-Cola state of America and force countries everywhere to make their water available for free, their children's health available for damaging to this company so that Coca-Cola's profits can grow. It doesn't matter what health happens to the health of the planet and the health of our children. I had never been in a courtroom before in, in my entire life, and it's, it's kind of intimidating. Our side were the everyday people. Our table had Jim Olson, our attorney, and another attorney that was, was helping him out. The other side of the courtroom, there were like four lawyers plus more all the suits. Jim Olson would get up and speak, and it sounded like, wow, you know, we know what we're talking about. Is profit wrong? No, I'm talking about something different than private rights and private goods. I'm talking about things that are a public commons, like water, subject to a public trust. The Doyles are the plaintiffs, and they live on dead stream. And they have been known to, to canoe and kayak. And Nestle's lawyer got up in the courtroom and said, the Doyles are really too old to enjoy dead stream. And we were just sitting there, I can't believe he just said that. You know, if you weren't pumping, we wouldn't even be talking about these Band-Aid suggestions. We were wondering if the judge was getting it because it was all kind of being thrown at him because we'd been doing this for two years with the research and everything. So they were comfortable among themselves with the jargon so that it was just part of their language, whereas for me it was not. I didn't know which way it was going to go. We had gone to the court and were all of us were kind of standing in the lobby, milling about, waiting for the decision, and just the lawyers would go to get the opinion. 
And when Jim came out, and just flattens himself against the wall and said, we won it all.